our panel of experts today. So today we have two of the startups that are in our FinTech and Cybersecurity program with us, the CEO of Clippercast, Yelen Knetering. We have Roland DeVos, the Chief Products and Change Officer at Travelex. And we have Wouter Meuse, CEO of Stamp Wallet. So I'm going to jump in and I'm going to ask you, Yelen, about uh, the retailers that you help them how to understand their clients better. So could you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so Clippercast is a digital receipt ecosystem and by digitizing receipts we help retailers to identify and re-identify their customers. Um, so we have a unique identifier and we can uh, put all the customer purchasing information on one identifier um, so they are more capable to compete with their online competitors. So if I'm a retailer and I have a physical store, how does it work? Do you have a, a physical product that you are linking? Yeah, so it's a plug and play device, it's really tiny. Um, you connect it to a POS system between the POS and the printer um, and it works plug and play. So in about five minutes you can install it yourself. Okay, so then if I'm not a retailer but actually a client of a retailer mm -hmm. and they've installed this and I come in and I make a purchase, how does that work? If, if I want to have my receipt um, immediately, I don't have to get a printout but it's already on my phone or? So at this stage you have to identify yourself by either a barcode uh, or NFC or iBeacon, uh, but we're working on a way to make it completely, uh, completely seamless. Um, so you will only have to pay with your banking card and will, uh, the receipt will come into your banking account. Uh, Great. And I can use it as warranty as well. Yeah, you can, yeah. Super. So, Wouter, um, can you tell us how you bring the physical world of retailers together with the online world? Uh, yes, of course. Um, we use loyalty transactions for that. So. Um, how we started is that we use the old-fashioned and um, way of giving a stamp to a customer, and we digitalize that. Uh, why? Because uh, bringing online and offline a bit closer together. Because uh, yeah, uh, physical retail is struggling because they don't have the data and they don't know what to do with it. So uh, what Jaden just said is is really important, and we facilitate that as well. Um, and that's why it's also a really great combination because we have the transaction, they have the data, we can combine it and then um, suddenly the, the retailer knows when a certain person bought a certain product for example and they can act on it. For example, a really simple way is uh, they can use our platform to send um, a message to all women that bought a certain product for example. So that's data, uh, using data with tools uh, they ca can now connect uh, to their customers and, and, uh, and make it uh, yeah, a more project. direct. Yes, I, I think it's great yeah. because I'm uh, going to Starbucks now <coughs> actually here and I have this stamp that I need to bring with me each time but they have no ideas what I'm buying. Yeah. Um, the people there do but the people who need to analyze this and market to me do not. Yeah. Um, and when I'm in the States I, I have also their wallet so it was my birthday the other day and I got a get a free food or drink deal. That was really nice, actually. Uh, it is a good example what you said earlier. That the really strange thing is that usually what we saw is that a lot of retailers are using the old-fashioned stamp card, so the, the, the normal card, the paper card, but they just give it to a customer. So they don't know who the customer is and they don't ask for it as well. So they don't even write it down, for example. So only that part, by giving it digitally, you know what the user is and who it and when he got a stamp or not. And only that information is already really valuable for, for the retailer. And I'd like to hear a little bit more about some of the closed ecosystems that Stamp Wallet can work with. Yeah, yeah that's a good one because um, we're from Curacao, so we started there and we had a big problem there, or, uh, or had a customer had a big problem there, it was Renaissance, Renaissance Mall. Um, we had a lot of cruise stores there and usually people wouldn't save there because they were only on the island for like four or five hours. So what we try to do is uh, grab those clients and make sure that they get rewarded for shopping in, for example, store A, B and C. They, or, they also received stamps or points for Renaissance Mall and after three or four points they already could redeem it for a cup of coffee or sunscreen in this case. So uh, this way you use a closed group uh, loop to, um, to help each other, to make sure the tourists will shop in the closed loop. And that's something that's really important in loyalty. And it's a big market as well. So, 
So Roland and I had spoken about this before, that we both travel a lot, and how great would it be if at an airport like Schiphol, you could have some of this closed marketing, or if you were at uh, the train station, you see some applications with your company, how you could use these types of solutions and help some of your clients. Yeah, I think it's very important to uh, stress first is that uh, we sell as TravelX two products, eh? one of course uh, foreign currency, and uh, we allow, we enable people to uh, send uh, money across to uh, their home, eh? to their home address, to their families. Um, and what you see is very transactional based. So if you want to grow a, a customer relationship, um, uh, try to interact and try to uh, connect those people to your company is very important. Uh, of course, within the uh, legal framework what we have in the different countries, eh, as we are a worldwide uh, player, of course, uh, we have to, of course, respect the data privacy uh, regulations uh, very closely. So to in individualize, that's not possible, to, but to bring it back to anonymous data that is uh, perfectly sensible. And in this case, you can actually build that, and also if the customer allows, you can also build that relationship very strongly. And then these two solutions are not very uh, um, uh, intense on your company, so they're very um, uh, easy to implement, eh? so you can have a quick uh, benefit in building that relationship. So imagine that I'm uh, coming to a station and I can pin a TravelX, and at the same time there's a Starbucks there. Would there be some ways that uh, such a closed system could help me um, to get Yes, yeah, some, something more at uh, the Starbucks than I might be able to otherwise? Yeah, and that runs two ways. Eh? So we've done some research uh, that uh, quite a lot of customers are coming specifically to, to the TravelX uh, 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 branch. And uh, what you see is that, of course, it comes from two ways. One is then we can actually try to work together with uh, the partner, uh, for example, the railway station, eh? so we can elaborate on that, but to, uh, uh, to, to actually bring that customer who comes specifically for us also to other uh, uh, shops on the uh, railway stations. And it also goes the other way around. That, that those customers, uh, there's a lot of potential as well. There's a lot of footfall actually on those uh, locations to bring it to our offices. Great. Yeah, yeah that, that's a good one because we just discussed this earlier is that um, they bring traffic to a certain location because people will go there like 89% or something will go there only for tra using TravelX. So if you can combine it and give people a voucher or a point or a stamp or whatever or how you want to call it, and after that they will go into the station or whatever it is to buy something with that voucher or with that point or save more points, then you can one follow them so you know, okay, first they spent there and after that they went into the station, and you can reward them for them. You can reward them because they are doing so. Um, so that's a really important tool for them that they are driving traffic to certain locations with their with their business. Yeah. Yeah. What what I have, well, what what I think is very important that we talk about loyalty. Um, the the base offer of a company needs to be, of course, um, exceeding expectations from the customer as a as a starting point. Yeah, so if you don't deliver the right service to your customers, or loyalty or no loyalty, it will not bring anything for you and it will not bring anything for your customers. So I think it's important, starting point, to have a good service and then you can build on the different loyalty schemes. True. Yeah. So one of the things that I found interesting when we were talking about this space um, last week is that you guys said actually that you are seeing some ways that you could work together. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah. So. I think we're both working on empowering retailers and it's both data driven but on his side it's loyalty driven and on our side it's actually data analysis so we can combine the two so be an add-on for each other's products and it will only work better for the retailers. Yeah. I think that's really a nice part of the program that some of the startups sometimes see these ways to work together yeah. and if we, we're speaking about working together a lot of times startups and scale-ups they'd like to work with large corporates like you know, banks, insurers, other FIs like TravelX. How do you see working with these startups, these smaller companies? Yeah, I think that's a good question because uh, it starts all with innovation and uh, I think it's very important to explain what I see with innovation. It's renewal all the time and it can be in small steps and I think that is the responsibility of the company itself to constantly uh, every day to make by the end of the day to make your process, your service even better than the day before. Um, 
um, and, and that also, um, and then the other one is more incremental, or uh, uh, this one incremental, but that won't mean that more disruptive. And that's where the combination comes in, and that's where I think uh, this uh, it's, it requires a complete different attitude to really be disruptive for your um, uh, business model. Yeah. And that's where the um, uh, the innovation company starts uh, to come in because the, it's it's a complete different way of of thinking about uh, how you do business. And that's where I think also is the challenge, yeah? because uh, uh, looking at a company like Travelex, we are very good in optimizing our processes within the certain uh, boundaries of, of the business model. And uh, working with these two, uh, two companies actually brings a completely different way of working or thinking actually into the company. So it's like a new value proposition. It and is. But it's also a different way of thinking. And you have to either embrace it, but that also requires open-mindedness. Yeah. And, um, uh, and that slowly has to come into the core of the company as well. It's uh, not always easy, but it is very useful. It is, and it's also required yeah. to jump to, into the next group. <coughs> yeah, I, I, sorry, I also, also think when working with another startup, like uh, with Clippa, then you see it's really fast. We're doing everything really fast. So we talked about it last week, okay, we have a client, we define it and we go on the market and we try to make a proposal for them. So we can do everything really fast, but working with other corporation is a bit, a bit more difficult, but for the corporation itself, it's also faster than when you do it completely yourself, I think, because Absolutely. you can do it separate on the sideline. So that, I think that's the, a really important thing to work together with startups and combination. Yeah, and I, I think like a lot of large companies, they try to set up an innovation team, but mm -hmm. the teams are always part of the box that is that people are thinking inside mm -hmm. of. And that's where we come in. We help them to step over the edge of that box. And, and we cannot do it without the corporates, and the corporates, I think, are very bad at innovating without us. So, so I see you guys often as outsourced R&D. Yeah. Um, people who are also challengers to the yeah, traditional way of thinking and, yeah. and helping them speed up and get to market much uh, more quickly. Yeah, I think that's a good question. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you guys very much for being here. We really appreciate uh, your insights and looking forward to hearing how this collaboration is working and if indeed you end up doing some things with these startups. So, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you very much.